I don't know if it's the accents or the tea or driving on the wrong side of the road, but no matter what it is, I love British TV and I'm getting my fill and then some thanks to Acorn TV. Acorn TV is the largest commercial free British streaming service that features compelling stories, exclusive premieres and originals you won't find anywhere else. Acorn TV has hundreds of exclusive shows from around the world, including award-winning mysteries, dramas, comedies, history, and so much more. The series you find on Acorn TV are cleverly written, visually striking, and feature renowned actors and hosts like David Tennant and Mary Berry. I'm currently binging Under the Vines. New episodes are released weekly, starring Charles Edwards from The Crown. This dramedy follows two unlikely city slickers who inherit a failing vineyard in rural New Zealand. Despite neither ever having done a hard day's work in their lives and both despising the other, they must somehow make the vineyard successful so they can sell up, split up, and get out of there. It has so much drama. You get thousands of hours of new enthralling content on Acorn TV for a fraction of the cost compared to most streaming services. It's just $5.99 a month. Now, what I love most about Acorn TV is the endless options. I never run out of something to watch. With Acorn TV, I always get my British fix, and you can too. Try Acorn TV free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and using my promo code RATCHET. But you have to enter the code in all lowercase letters. That's A-C-O-R-N dot T-V, promo code RATCHET, to get your first 30 days for free. Acorn dot TV, code RATCHET. Getting back into your work routine but not loving your old work clothes? Time to upgrade to Beta Brand. Beta Brand's ultra-comfortable dress pant yoga pants means your routine can include clothes with professional style and comfort that you actually look forward to wearing. Beta Brand's dress pant yoga pants are designed with the fit and flexibility of yoga pants, but they look like polished dress pants. They're soft, comfy, perfectly stretchy, and stay wrinkle-free. Choose from dozens of colors, patterns, cuts, and styles like boot cut, joggers, cropped, skinny, and more. And they have fun, limited time prints, but they sell out fast, so don't wait. I have the Boot Cut Classic in black. I love them. So comfy. Women love these dress pant yoga pants because they fit so well. Whether you're sitting at a desk for eight hours, bending and moving all day, or running all over town. No digging, pulling, or squeezing. They move with you, so you look good and feel great all day. And if you think this sounds good, here's a more to get excited about. Pockets, machine washable, yoga, denim. That's right. Looks like denim, feels like heavenly comfort. Right now, get 30% off your Beta Brand order when you go to betabrand.com slash ratchet. That's B-E-T-A brand.com slash ratchet for 30% off your order for a limited time. Make sure to use our special URL because it supports our show. Find out why women are buying five different pairs of these pants. Go to betabrand.com slash ratchet today for 30% off. How many unread emails do you have sitting in your inbox? Are you wasting hours and hours of your day procrastinating? If you're having trouble getting it done or even getting started, Thesis can help. Thesis makes personalized supplement formulas that are specifically designed to boost cognitive function. It's based on the science of nootropics, which are natural and powerful ingredients like caffeine, ginseng, and B12 that increase productivity, focus, energy, and mental clarity. Feel energized without the crash. Cut through brain fog to think clearly or get a little help with motivation to find your flow. Take their three-minute online quiz and Thesis will recommend high-quality nootropic formulas that are unique to you and your goals. Over 60,000 entrepreneurs, lawyers, engineers, busy professionals, and parents have used Thesis to get better results at work and home. Imagine what you could do with Thesis. You know what I can do with Thesis? Finish these book proposals and start on a new project that I came up with while traveling. Right now, Thesis is offering our listeners 10% off your first starter kit when you visit takethesis.com ratchet. 
Go to takethesis.com slash ratchet to take this quiz and discover your unique nootropic combination and save 10% on your first starter kit. That's takethesis.com slash ratchet. Make sure to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas, who is still in Ghana. (laughs) I realized yesterday that I'm developing the same dysfunctional relationship with Ghana, with Accra specifically, that I had with New York, in that I love this city, even though it is emotionally and physically abusive to me. Like, I have these amazing out of this world kind of days where it'll be like 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. And then something will happen. There's just like a zero. And you're just like, what? I thought you loved me. And turns out you don't. But then you love me again. So now I'm confused. How do you feel about me? I don't know. If this was an actual relationship, I would say break up with it. But (sighs) yesterday, January 10th, was a three-year anniversary of Ratchet and Respectable. And I'm always very reflective around my podcast anniversary and my birthday. I'm not even reflective around New Year's Eve anymore. Like, it's another year. It'll change if you change. And you also don't have to wait until, like, January 1st to change. Or Monday. You can just, you know, change at Tuesday at 11.33 a.m., which is the time it is now in Ghana. I didn't do anything yesterday to celebrate the anniversary of the podcast. I, um, I ended up going to Elmina Castle, which had been on my bucket list For this trip, Elmina Slave Castle, if you're not familiar, it's where the Portuguese and the Dutch would hold the Africans that they captured until their ships came back to pick up their captive Africans and take them across the Atlantic to Brazil or the Caribbean or America. Not the most festive way to spend a most festive day but a good experience nonetheless. It was a good tour in terms of information given. I mean, I had moments on the tour where I was very sad listening to the information. There was also a moment where I was like pissed at the tour guide. He he walked us inside one area that I thought was a dungeon. And he was like, this wasn't a dungeon. This was a jail. Like if you notice, like the doors are well ventilated and there's two windows. This is for soldiers who were unruly. Maybe they'd gone AWOL or some such. And so they would throw them into jail. We went in that space and then we came out of that space. And so then he opened the door to the next space and he held his hand to like, you know, send us inside. And it was just me and my friend on the tour. We got there like super early. So we were the only people So we go inside and this mofo shuts the door. This was not like the jail. Didn't have, it was a, it was another iron door. It had very minimal slats in it and there were no windows. So we're in the dark. There's just a teeny tiny bit of light outside. And this mofo proceeds to give us the tour through the door and tells us, yeah, so this was where they kept the rebellious captive Africans. So if people tried to escape or people tried to organize or, or, or tried to fight the insane and crazed and, and depraved people who had captured them, if they were considered not worth the headache, then they would be thrown in this area to starve and die. He's telling us through the door, with the door shut, while me and my friend are standing there in this like oppressive heat in the dark. And this, and this man is telling us about all the people who died in the room that we're standing in. Again, in the dark, in the oppressive heat. I was like, sir, if you don't open this door and get me the fuck out of here. But yeah, it was a really, um, it was a really bad tour. I'd been to Cape Coast Slave Castle a couple times. And after the last time, I was like, I can't do this to myself anymore. Like we got there late and our tour guide, who was super amazing, he took us on the tour at night. And for that tour, the dungeons are literally underground. So you go down and around and then you're underground. So we're underground at night in a slave castle, I think in the men's dungeon. And this man is describing about how there were no toilets, facilities to use a toilet. I mean, we're talking, you know, 1500s, 1600s. So, you know, obviously no modern toilets, but there was no function for them to use the toilet. It was just like, where you're captured. You're going to sleep and eat and smell your own shit. So he was talking about how like the floor would have been coated with essentially shit, blood, sweat, tears, vomit, 
whatever. And so that dungeon is what he had us standing in at night. And if you've ever seen the beginning to Sankofa, which I watched in college, I think there were, I read something recently about how um, Ava DuVernay had remastered. I don't think, I don't know if that's the right word. I think it is, but I think she'd remastered Sankofa and re-released it because I know it was really hard to find at one point. But if you haven't watched it, it's a really good film. If I recall correctly, it's a woman who goes to Africa and I don't remember quite her reasoning for being there, but she goes to visit a slave castle. It was Cape Coast Castle. And I think she gets left behind with her group. There's some sort of time warp and she ends up on a plantation. If I recall, it's in Haiti. Because I remember machetes were like a big part of the storyline. Last time I was at Cape Coast, I'm standing there in this dungeon at dark and the man is telling this story about the conditions of captured Africans. And I was like, oh, hell no. And I was like, God, if you get me out of here without time warping me to like, you know, slavery, I ain't coming back no more. So I'm not going back to Cape Coast. I might if my parents come visit me in Ghana and they want to go. But otherwise, I'm good on Cape Coast and I'm good on Elmina. I read there's another castle. There's bunches of them. All of them were not used as slave castles. Originally, they were essentially... um, a trading post, warehouses. So when white folks would come and want to get their, their gold and ivory and whatever else, they would stock them up in these trading posts. That's what originally the slave castles were for. And then when they started, you know, with the human cargo, which was far more lucrative, they switched them over to that. You know, on three separate occasions, I've gone out to Cape Coast, including yesterday, and it's a three-hour drive each way. And I'm sitting on the tour yesterday, and the guy was like, yeah, he was like, and there's a castle in Osu." I said, what you mean it's a castle in Osu? Like Osu, like up the street from where I've been staying? I ain't have to drive three hours for this tour? (laughs) It's like the time I went to um, Panama and I saw two black Jesus. Jesus is? G-Sai? I don't know what the plural of Jesus is. But I saw two of them, black ones. They've been standing up in Panama for about 350 years. And I was so excited. I called my dad when I got back to the hotel and I said, Daddy! I saw two black Jesuses, G-side, two statues of Jesus. I was so excited. And my daddy was like, oh. And I said, daddy, you're not excited about black Jesus? You seen a black Jesus? And he was like, yeah, it is a black Jesus. They got one right up on, uh, what's the name of that street? He named some street in Detroit that was two blocks from my grandparents' house. I said, they got a black Jesus? He said, yeah, they got a black Jesus. He said, it was a white Jesus. But it was an all-black neighborhood, so the black folks kept painting Jesus black. And he said the white people would go, and they would repaint the white Jesus white. And he said the black people came back, and they painted Jesus black. He said that went on for a while, and then the white folks just let Jesus be black. But yeah, it's a black Jesus up on... <laughs> What's the name of that street? He was up on... Um, I wish I could remember the name of that church. I've seen the black Jesus, too, because I've been to Detroit since then. And I was like, I'll be damned. My dad, he was like, yeah, Jesus been black since the 60s. <laughs> uh, but after we left the slave castle, me and my friend, we went to, um, we went to a, a beach resort nearby. And we just like sat by the ocean and drank. We were silent for a while. When I shared the story of the slave castle online, like plenty of people, you know, wrote in to say that they'd been. And they were like, oh, I cried and cried and cried. It was just so sad. And I was like, you know what? I don't really get sad at the slave castle. I think the first time I went, I cried, but it wasn't like tears of of sadness. It was more tears of anger. I be getting mad at white folks. My mom talked about watching Roots and she was like, it was really hard to go to work the next day and like see white folks. She was like, Roots was a miniseries. Like, you know, it ran all week. And she was like, that was just a bad week for black people to go to work. But I felt that way. Like after the tour of the slave castle, like after the tour ended, we sat down for a minute and we just sort of like processed And then we were walking around taking pictures in like the main courtyard. And there were some white people there, like four white people. And they were on a tour with another guy. And I just saw the white people. And I was just like, just, I won't tell you what I thought because it was so disrespectful. And these specific white people who were there hadn't done a damn thing to me or to my knowledge, anyone else. They were just there on the tour trying to learn and, and get the history lesson like everyone else. But I just saw them and I was like, why are they here? What the fuck are they doing here? They the ones that really need to know this shit and all the atrocities of it. I mean, black folks know. At least American black folks, Caribbean black folks, Brazilian black folks. I don't know if black folks in Africa, not that they don't know. I'll tell you a story. 
And this whole podcast is not going to be about Ghana. But in the times that I've been speaking to Ghanaian friends that live here or even had conversations with people who've had conversations with Ghanaian friends about going to visit the castles, there's a degree of sympathy, but not empathy. This is just in my personal experience and anecdotal experience of people that I've spoken to. I'm not trying to say that, like, this is what the Gunyan community feels about blah, blah, blah. But, but, like, overall, like, the response has sort of been like, yeah, that's really sad for African Americans. They really take, they really take that visit hard. And I'm like, you don't take that visit hard? And, like, my, my friend who's from here was like, yeah, like, we used to visit the castles, like, as a field trip in school. And she was like, I mean, like, we all know, but she was like, there's not, like, the emotional attachment that African Americans have to it. And I was like, that's weird to me, because I would think the people who were rounded up in the castles were African. There's not the separation of, like, African and America and, like, oh, you're over here and I'm over here. Like, that distance, that cultural divide, like, doesn't exist yet. Like, these are people, like from Africa, from West Africa, who have been rounded up and captured and were put in this place and then sent away. Nothing? Nothing? And she was just like, I mean, honestly, she was like, I feel you. I feel you. I think it's wrong. I think it's horrible. I think it's terrible. But she was like, you're asking me if I feel anything about it? And she was like, honestly, no. Okay. We can't make people feel what they don't feel. But I was just like, oh, Like, not mad, not sad. She was like, it's just, it's like, it's a history lesson. I think, like, wow, that's fucked up. But she was like, I don't have some sort of, like, a visceral feeling about it that you seem to, like, want me to have. And I was like, oh. But that's kind of, like, the general sentiment that I've heard. And I was like, I don't know what that's about. Yesterday, the guy was explaining, and he was like, you know, the slave castles, dungeons, were a roundup of people from, like, across an area so it wasn't just Gunyan people. There was also Nigeria. There was also Ivory Coast. There are some other countries that are on like this, you know, Western curve. And so maybe that's why there's a sense in the United States that like something that happens to the U.S., like say something happens in New York, like a 9-11, the country feels it because we're the United States of America. So something happens to one state, it happens to all But I don't know that Ghana feels like the same way about something that happens to the Ivory Coast, which is literally next door because it's not their country, even though it's literally next door, almost like a state. I don't know. That's me throwing out ideas. I really don't know what the answer is to that. Maybe it's just like Africa is like so much other crazy shit has happened. They're just like, you know what? That's just like, you know, in a long list. I don't know why like we care about that one the way we care about all the other ones, which is to say like it's a lot. And so it's just a thing that happened. I don't know. That's, that's my stab in the dark. That's a guess. But whenever I've tried to ask somebody, they're just like, I mean, it's really sad for y'all. <laughs> Thank you for acknowledging it's sad for us. But I don't really get sad. I'd be mad as shit. I'm going to like fight something like Molotov cocktail something. I'm like blow this bitch up. Why does it exist? I guess if it didn't exist, people would actually pretend like it didn't happen. You know, the people who like deny the Holocaust. I'm like, but you, the gas chambers are still standing. Like, what what do you think they were made for? There are people that survived them that are still alive. Like, you just think people are making that shit up? I feel like they would try to do the same thing with slavery. They already be trying to spin slavery as like, oh, it was indentured servitude. Not, not quite. Not, not quite. Not quite the same. Yeah. So that's how I spent the third anniversary of my podcast. So we went to one beach club and we ate and we drank. And then we ran into some friends of my friends who were just checking out of that beach club and they were heading back to Accra and they were going to do some other stuff in that area. And then they were going to this place called Africa House. So we were like, well, we'll chill out here and eat and then y'all go do that and then we'll meet you at Africa House. So we did that. So we made a whole day of it. Africa House is beautiful. As soon as I walked in, I was like, it's like a black American did this. Because it was like a combination of like, just looking around the area, it was flags from Jamaica, the red, black and green, black American flag. And then the Gunyan flag. And then they had these huts on the property. One hut was the Malcolm X hut. Another hut was Harriet Tubman was on a hut. And then the huts were like red, black, and green. I was like, yep, an American did this shit. I'm positive. An American did this. And then we sat down and I ordered sorrel. And the guy was like confused. And I was like, sorrel. Because I saw it on the menu. It's like sorrel. And so the guy like went back and he came back with the owner and the owner came and he said, what you want now, babe? And I was like, ah, 
I knew it. I knew it. He was like Bissap. They call it Bissap here. Ah, got it. I mixed Bissap with Captain Morgan's rum. Genius. I am a genius sometimes. Okay, maybe like a mixologist, but stay with me. But he came and he sat down and he talked to us. He's from Brooklyn, Bed-Stuy. He did a whole bunch of things in his life, like entertainment, pharmacy, legal pharmacy, just for clarity. He decided, 26 years ago, he said he was living in Atlanta and he was like, he just decided there's got to be more than this. He was like, it was another time when America was, you know, rife with police shootings, police killings, police brutality of black men. He was like, but when does that time not exist, like in American history? And I was like, well, you have a point. And he was like, I was just like, there has to be something more than this. And he was like, I wasn't running from something, though. I was running to something. And so he said he came to Ghana um, and he's only been back once. He's traveled other places, but he's only been back once to America since he left. Really nice guy. You know, he sat down and talked to us for a really long time. There were a bunch of kids running around the property. Cute, 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 adorable kids. He was like, well, this is my son. He's one. This is my other son. He's two. Then he had a daughter who was about nine. I think there was another daughter who was about four. Then there was like an older kid who's living in Los Angeles. He said he had two wives. They're both 39. I said, oh, okay. Sir is over in Africa living his best life. Got a beachside property. Done found the best of the cultures of Jamaica, America, and Ghana. And is chilling by the beach with the breeze. He sat down and had two big beers while I was talking to him. I had one sorrel. He had two big beers. Then he proceeded to like read my personality based on my facial features. That's when shit got interesting. I saved that story for another day. It was a good day. And then we took a ride back to Accra and the traffic was like abysmal because that's just what rush hour traffic is in Accra. Like it's a major city. So that's that. That's enough Accra for this week. As I sit here trying to figure out like, am I leaving tomorrow? I don't want to leave. I love this place. I am. I've been told y'all I don't hit tens when I'm in LA and LA is a perfectly lovely city. It's a comfortable place for me. And I never hit a zero, which is great. I never go below like a three or a four in LA, but I also never go above like a a six or a seven. Like, it's just like, "Mm, that was cool. Like one of my LA highlights is going to the orthodontist. That's how I feel about LA. It's not a bad place. It's just not my favorite place. So yeah, I'm like in no real rush to go home. So hopefully I can figure out this flight situation. God willing. Kick off 2022 with a better checking account with no monthly fees. Chime, an award-winning app and debit card, has no overdraft fees, foreign transaction fees, monthly fees, or service fees. With over 60,000 fee-free in-network ATMs at many locations like most Walgreens, 7-Eleven, and CVS, you can access your money when you need it, where you need it. I love that. You can also send money to anyone, even if they aren't on Chime. Fee-free for you and no cash-out fees for them. Make your first good decision of the new year and join over 10 million people using Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at chime.com slash ratchet. That's chime.com slash ratchet. Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bancorp Bank or Stride Bank North America. Members FDIC. Get fee-free transactions at any MoneyPass ATM in a 7-Eleven location and at any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Otherwise, out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. Sometimes pay anyone instant transfers can be delayed. The recipient must use a valid debit card or be a Chime member to claim funds. Never get tired of a good whodunit? Then you'll love June's journey. You play as June Parker, an amateur detective investigating a series of mysteries full of twists and turns around every corner. You'll put your power of observation to the test, sharpen your sleuthing skills, and relish the thrill of solving the case. Whether you're craving a good mystery or just need to get away for a while, June's Journey is the perfect game for you. Sit back and relax and let your inner Sherlock escape to the glamorous Roaring Twenties. You'll search for hidden clues to solve mystery after mystery across thousands of vivid scenes. And with new chapters every week, there's always a new case waiting to be cracked. I love playing June's Journey when I have a little bit of downtime. It's fun to look for hidden objects, and I love an engaging game that makes me think. 
Ready to awaken your inner detective? Download June's Journey free today on the Apple App Store or Google Play. We have good black news this week. So did you know Maya Angelou is is on a quarter? Which I don't know how I missed this. Like I heard a whole lot about like Harriet Tubman being on a dub, but I never heard anything about like Maya Angelou on a quarter. And I'm reading this on CNN. Maya Angelou becomes the first black woman to appear on a U.S. quarter. Is she not the first woman? Who was the first woman? But the Maya Angelou quarter is the first quarter in the American Women Quarters program. So there will be a series of coins which will feature prominent women in American history. And they're all going to roll out from this year, first with Maya Angelou, obviously, and they're going to roll out through 2025. So George Washington still will be on the quote and unquote head side of the quarter. And then Maya Angelou is going to be on the tail side. Oh, there are four more quarters coming this year. Maya Angelou is just the first. So another quarter will be for Sally Ride. She was an astronaut, first American woman in space. And there's an Asian American actress, Anna Mae Wong. Cherokee Nation leader, Wilma, Wilma Mankiller. And suffragette and politician, Nina Otero Warren. I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that Sally's white. Anna Mae Wong is identified as Asian American. Cherokee Nation leader obviously is identified as Native American. And then the suffragette and politician, Nina Otero Warren. The Otero is giving me Latina vibes. Let's look up and see. So she's not identified as Latina in this Google search that I'm looking at. So what I'm looking at doesn't identify her as Latina or Mexican, but her original name is Adelina and she was born in New Mexico. Okay, so the bottom of the article refers to her Hispanic. Thank you. Y'all could have identified her as that at the top of the article. There's nothing wrong with being Hispanic. All right, so the multicultural coins are coming out. That's good. They're representing a little everybody. That's what's supposed to happen. Okay, good for the coins. Somebody got this shit right, it sounds like. All right, we can move on to the next topic now. I just wanted to make sure that like the Hispanics, Latinas, Mexicans, somebody was represented. The brown was represented. That's all I was trying to figure out. Jesus. Okay. The Golden Globes happened, which you may or may not know about because the Golden Globes didn't air. I vaguely remember the controversy around the Golden Globes. I remember like a bunch of celebrities said they weren't going. And I'm reading this article on CNET.com and they were talking about there was a lack of diversity in the nominees. There was a problem with the voting process and the finances. Y'all pick a struggle. Pick a struggle. You can't have all the struggles at once. They still had the ceremony on Sunday. In L.A. at the Beverly Hilton, where they usually have it. But they turned it into a private event. They decided not to air it this year. I guess because they didn't want to hear nobody's bullshit. But I did read that there were good wins at the ceremony. The first thing I saw was that Will Smith won a Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Motion Picture for King Richard. Which I still have not seen. I meant to download it before I came on the trip. And then I just was running around doing so much that I, um, that I didn't get a chance to. So congratulations to Will Smith. He's having like a banner year. Well, okay, so maybe not like, you know, part of it. Maybe like the August Alcina thing probably wasn't the best part. But take that part out. And then you've got like the YouTube show that he did, which was freaking amazing. And then you have like his book and that whirlwind book tour. And then you have King Richard. And then you have him getting a Golden Globe. And I know it's like 2022 versus 2021, but still it's so new. But like now he won the Golden Globe. Like good for Will. I've heard good things about that film. I just have not watched it. Let's see. What other good news do we have? What other wins came through? I'm not going to read everything. I'm just going to read like the stuff that like I care about or stuff that we've discussed on here. Best TV series, Succession, which I agree. It was up against um, Lupin, which was really good on Netflix. That's the one with the, um, the black guy who like changes his hat and then white people don't recognize him anymore. It's actually a fun show. The Morning Show on Apple TV. Season one was good. I didn't get into season two. Pose. Pose was really, really good. And as much as I love Pose and all the brown people on it, I still understand why Succession won because Succession is my shit. That's a great show. And then Squid Game, which was also great TV. Best Director. I don't care. Best Actress. Nicole Kidman. I don't care. She was up against Lady Gaga and House of Gucci. Which, you remember we vaguely talked about, like, House of Gucci? Remember I went to New York and everyone was like, the trailer for House of Gucci! House of Gucci! Like, everyone was talking about House of Gucci. And then, 
House of Gucci came out and the critics panned it and I never heard another word about House of Gucci. At some point I'll watch it. Just to see what all the hype was. Just to see if it's as bad as everybody said it was. But Best actress in a motion picture. I don't care. Best actress in a TV drama. Yes, I do care. Best actress in a TV series drama. MJ Rodriguez from Pose. She's the first transgender woman to win a Golden Globe. So she's history making MJ Rodriguez. So good for her. That whole cast was amazing. Electra could have won one too. Billy didn't win nothing? Let me go through this list before I start talking shit. Um, best actor in supporting role? Don't care. Nobody I care is nominated. Best actor in a motion picture drama? That's Will Smith. We just talked about that. He was up against um, Mahershala Ali in Swan Song, which I also haven't seen. And then Denzel Washington in The Tragedy of Macbeth. Did that come out yet? Because I thought it came out on Christmas Day, but I just got an invite from Apple to do an at-home screening. They were going to send me like some wine and cheese and they wanted to send me a gift box. And they were like, or we can send your gift anywhere else in the continental United States. And I was like, I, I am not in the continental United States currently. I watched The Tragedy of Macbeth just because Denzel's in it. And because I'm constantly referencing Macbeth because of succession. Okay, what else? Best original song, don't care. Best actor in a motion picture, don't care. Even though the love of my life, Anthony Ramos, I'm obsessed with him. He's best actor in a motion picture, musical, or comedy. He did not win. That's why I'm like, I don't care. But he was nominated. Best limited series or TV movie. The Underground Railroad won. I liked particular episodes of The Underground Railroad. Overall, I didn't care for it. And I'll just leave it at that because I want to support black people's work. Mayor of Easttown was also nominated. That was good fucking TV. I'm unclear how the Underground Railroad won over Mayor of Easttown. Mayor of Easttown was fucking amazing television. Best TV series, don't care. Nothing I care about is nominated. Best actress, Jean Smart from Hacks won. She won over Issa Rae, Insecure, Tracy Ellis Ross for Blackish. Yeah. Best actress in a limited series or TV movie, Kate Winslet, Mayor of Easttown. I'll take that. Cynthia Revo was nominated for Genius Aretha. Cynthia Revo has an amazing voice. And her, her and her stylist are an amazing combination. But he dresses her so fucking amazing. And, and Cynthia, she's a tiny girl, but she wears the hell out of some gowns. She gives me gown hope. Because I'm only like 5'3". I don't wear gowns. I don't think I've ever worn a gown. My understanding of my height and gowns was like they just don't compliment me well. But Cynthia Arrivo in gowns gives me hope that I can wear a good gown. I just need to find the right fit for myself. Like even my wedding dress was like a high low because I didn't want like a full gown situation. Also didn't want like a whole like formal dress either. Like the original thing that I had like stopped at the knee. It was like a wedding suit. Let's see who else is on this list. Best supporting actress in a TV role. Sarah Snook. She plays the daughter. She plays Siobhan Shiv on Succession. She does a really good job. I don't know the other women who are nominated. So I won't argue against that. Nope. I don't think I care about any of this other stuff. Best Actor in a TV Series, Jeremy Strong from Succession. Brian Cox from Succession. That's the guy that plays the dad. Lee Jung Jae from Squid Game. I don't know which character that is. I'm sorry. Billy Porter from Pose, nominated. Ooh, that's tough. Billy Porter in Pose and Jeremy Strong in Succession. That's a tough choice. That was a really strong nominee category. I'm not mad at Jeremy Strong, but, you know. Personally, I would have voted for Billy. But that's just me. I'm not mad at Jeremy Strong, but I also would have been mad at Brian Cox, but I would have voted for Billy Porter in Pose. Anything else we care about here? No, I think we're good. Um, did I want to see any of that aired? It would have been nice. You know, I always like to look at the gowns. I probably would appreciate the pre-show and the gowns more than anything else, but you know, given it had, you know, questions of lack of diversity voting processes, I probably would have had to sit it out on GP anyway. So womp womp. What else we have to talk about? It's very interesting, the stuff that sort of filters into my, I don't know, what, like thinking space. Is that the word that I want to use while I'm traveling? Like people reach out to me to make sure I'm seeing certain things. To be like, I know you're overseas. They were like, I know you're traveling and you're doing the podcast. I just want to make sure you saw. Which I appreciate. Thank you very much. That's how I found out about Maya Angelou and the coin. I was like, wait, what? There was something else. 
Oh, Kanye West. We can't call him our friend Kanye because you know I denounced Kanye. What was the thing I denounced Kanye over? Oh, the Marilyn Manson thing. I was like, enough is enough. Like you're co-signing like the most wretched of people, you know, trying to like prove you're a good Christian and whatnot. And I'm like, can like, look, I believe in grace for those that seek it. The seek it part is very important. He just handing out grace to anybody who ain't even trying to seek anything. And also, when I say that there is grace for those that seek it, it doesn't mean there's no accountability and there doesn't mean there's no consequence. It just means grace. It doesn't mean no prison time. It just means grace. Kanye just be out here embracing anybody. Literally, literally and physically embracing folks. He's dating this new chick. And they doing interviews together. I, like, there are these pictures circulating everywhere. And I was like, is this like paparazzi? Like, where do these pictures come from? But they're posed. And apparently they're for Interview Magazine. What's the girl's name? Kanye and somebody Fox. I don't know who she is. I'm like literally Googling. Julia Fox. So she did an interview. And actually, she wrote a whole story about this shit for Interview Magazine. Like, about her dating Kanye. And I want to say this was like... Day four of them dating. I'm reading her. I'm reading her piece on Interview Magazine right now. She said she met Ye because Kanye has legally changed his name to Ye. I'm not calling him that. She met Kanye in Miami on New Year's Eve. She said it was, quote, an instant connection. They decided to keep the energy going and fly back to New York to see slave play. So this black man met this white chick and took her to see slave play. After the play, they went to dinner. She says that at the restaurant, Ye directed an entire photo shoot for me while people dined. The whole restaurant loved it and cheered us on while it was happening. After dinner, Ye had a surprise for me. At the time of writing, she says, I'm still in shock. She said Ye had an entire hotel suite full of clothes. It was every girl's dream come true. It felt like a real Cinderella moment. I don't know how he did it or how he got all of it there in time, but I was so surprised. Like, who does things like this on a second date or any date? Everything with us has been so organic. I don't know where things are headed, but if this is any indication of the future, I'm loving the ride. And so I'm scrolling through this and there's like tons of pictures of Kanye and this woman at this restaurant And then in this hotel suite where he's playing Barbie with her. Isn't it the same shit he did for Kim? I remember at the time when he changed Kim's wardrobe, there was a part of me that was like, oh my God, that's so amazing. Because I'm thinking of like, oh, he just like went big budget on her. And then other people were like, that's some weird controlling shit. Like that woman wear what she wants to wear. And I was like, oh, okay. I could kind of see the other side of that too. But yeah, she's giving interviews about her date with Kanye. So I, I don't even know who she is. She's an actress. She looks like Kim. She's not as big in the bottom, but you know, this might be the starter booty. Kim wasn't always that big in the bottom either. She's a pretty girl, but she totally gives Kim vibes. I would be uncomfortable with this shit. Cause literally like a month ago, wasn't this man publicly begging for his wife to come back? He, talking about he didn't want his wife and his kids to leave him. He wanted his marriage. He wanted to be a family man, a father and a husband. And hold up. And wasn't he also, didn't he buy a house across the street from Kim? And I was, this gets crazier and crazier the more I think about it. Remember he did the concert in LA and he changed the lyrics to some song and Kim was there. Something Kim specifically, run back to me, Kim specifically. I think that's what he said. Kim or somebody in Kim's camp gave an interview the next day and was like, I'm quite confused about how he's begging for, for me back. And yet he's living with some Victoria's Secret model in Malibu. We talked about this on here. And I was like, I hope model in Malibu got a backup plan. Because, like, that shit's not stable and ain't going to last long. I was like, you living up in his house. Like, you ain't give up your old house, right, sis? I said, I said an auntie needs to call niece and make sure she's playing this correctly. Because, like, she about to be caught out there. Where's model sis? Black model sis. Where's she at? She good? Is sis Okay. Where's sis at? Because now he parading around this new white chick, this Kim knockoff who's giving interviews about their whirlwind romance. Real excited to tell people about the shit he's doing for her that he also publicly did for someone else. I was like, sis, that's just his MO. He got the money to blow. It's not that special. All the creativity and fresh ideas this man got, he not using them on you. 
I mean, take the cash and the wardrobe, sis. I mean, play the game. Because he's using you to get back at his wife. Don't you leave this situation with some fond memories and nothing to show for it. Take the wardrobe. Like, I'm scrolling through these pictures. I see a lot of Dior. That can go for a good resale if you're in financial straits. I'm just saying. But please don't get caught up out here. Because Kim say tomorrow, Kanye come home. Your ass will be high and dry. Just like the little model in Malibu. He got a new chick. Now she Jennifer Aniston. Actually, Kim moved on first and was walking around with that weird looking white comedian dude. That would make Kanye Jennifer Aniston too, wouldn't it? Huh. But Kanye has a new documentary, a trilogy called Genius. J-E-E-N hyphen Y-U-H-S. Genius. Coming out on Netflix in February. Now, you know, I sit around and talk about how Kanye is trash, but then I also still like watch everything Kanye does. I have a dysfunctional relationship with Kanye. I just can't let him go. I can acknowledge he is trash. But that he's done miracles on me, I told you, it hits me right in the heart. It's the organs. It made me miss my grandma. I just cannot let him go. So I'm going to say Yeezy ain't shit, but I'm also going to be like, yeah, so on February, we watching this together or nah? A bunch of y'all said nah, but a bunch of y'all was like, yeah, we watching. I know. I know. It ain't just me. It's a lot of us that can't let him go. I love my smile. What I don't love is all the toxic ingredients in most dental care products. They're not good for my health or my teeth. I want the best for my oral health. Products made with natural ingredients that help my smile not harm it. That's why I use Lumino. Lumino makes toothpaste, mouthwash, and whitening products that actually help your oral health instead of hurting it. They use purposeful and uncompromising ingredients like sea salt, aloe, and coconut oils to clean and brighten your smile. Plus, everything they make is certified non-toxic. You won't find harsh bleaches, artificial dyes, or alcohol in any of Lumino's products. Everything they make is dentist-formulated, backed by over 50 studies, and proven to protect the good bacteria in your smile, also known as the microbiome. Lumino whitening strips are super effective and perfect for sensitive teeth, like mine. It only takes 30 minutes to apply and you'll see results in 7 days, making for incredible before and after pics. Now you know how obsessive I am about my teeth and how sensitive they are. Lumino makes sure that my very expensive smile stays the way my orthodontist intended. I love how my smile feels and looks and I know you'll love Lumino as much as I do too. Get 15% off your first order today by going to luminohealth.com slash ratchet. That's L-U-M-I-N-E-U-X-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash ratchet to save 15%. Luminohealth.com slash ratchet. With ShipStation, my small business made it through the holiday rush. But there's another merch drop coming and now is not the time to start slacking on shipping or customer orders. Shipping delays, supply shortages, holiday demand. Last year was a mess. Now you're ringing in the new year with impatient customers and expensive shipping rates. Ah, It's time to switch to a shipping solution that can handle it all painlessly. I've been using ShipStation since the beginning of my business. And even though the rush of my holiday rush is over, it's about to start again because we've got a new merch drop coming soon. My favorite thing about using ShipStation is how easy it is. Running a business comes with a lot of headaches and ShipStation isn't one of them. With ShipStation, you save time by funneling all your orders into one simple interface, no matter where you're selling, even in Accra. Manage every order, Amazon, eBay, Etsy, or like me, your own website from anywhere, even your phone. No more headaches from dealing with returns and return tracking. ShipStation makes it easy. And even more important than saving money, save your sanity. With ShipStation, you know your orders are handled and you're getting the best rates. Make shipping the easy part of having an online store. You have bigger ideas to think about. No wonder 98% of companies that use ShipStation for a year keep using it for as long as they're in business. It's that good. Ship more in less time with ShipStation. Use my offer code RESPECT to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free of no-hassle, stress-free shipping. 
Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in RESPECT. ShipStation. Make ship happen. What would you do if you didn't have high interest loans or credit card debt? With Upstart, you can pay off your existing debt quickly and easily and start living your life. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan, all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over 1 million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. What I love about Upstart is that rather than looking at credit score alone, Upstart considers other factors like your income, current employment, and credit history to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate without impacting your credit score in minutes for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. You can even receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash ratchet. That's upstart.com slash ratchet. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Upstart.com slash ratchet. What else? There's so much more. But really, y'all, I'm about to go to the pool because this may be my last day. Oh, the Jill Scott sex tape, which may or may not exist. I'm not going to lie. I looked for it. I heard there was a Jill Scott sex tape. And I was like, let me see what Jill is up to. I've seen Jill Scott live. But she, when I saw her live, she wasn't doing some of the things that she does in the videos I've seen of her live show. But I saw Jill Scott had a sex tape. And I was like, you know what? It's never too late to learn anything new. You can learn from a lot of places. It's not too late to learn new things. I'm midlife. I'm not old. I'm midlife. I'm not old life. I'm still interested in learning new things. I said, what could Jill Scott teach me that I don't know? And I wasn't being funny. Like, what could she teach me? I said, I was looking to see what could she actually teach me? I'd like to learn. She seems to have some effective practices. Apparently, the whole damn internet has been looking for this Jill Scott sex tape, and it hasn't come up yet. Jill got wind of people talking about the sex tape. She didn't deny that one existed. She said, say word. She tweeted this. She said, I expect this energy when my new movies, albums, and TV show drop. Y'all too much. I also find it funny how, you know how online folks be dragging plus size women. They be dragging the plush ladies. Like you need to lose weight. You need to get in the gym. Jill Scott's a plus size lady. Folks was damn near about to crash the internet trying to find that sex tape. Like, you telling me you don't like plush size, but your actions saying otherwise, sirs and madams. I know I wasn't the only person looking to see the tape. It was a sex tape. Jill was with a friend. I'd like to see what the friend do, too. Again, always looking to learn new things. I have my auntie. When I was coming up, auntie gave great advice. Auntie said an intelligent woman knows a little bit about a lot of things. Some of the things that Jill Scott knows. I'd like to be an intelligent woman. I'd like to know a little about them. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If somebody comes across this Jill Scott sex tape, just, um, you know, share. Be a friend, friend. Share. My DMs are open. Wait. Actually, my DMs are open. I had to open them up when I came back, when I came over here, because I don't have my, um, I switched out my SIM card. So my phone number is not active. So my friends can get in touch with me. A lot of people are just not on WhatsApp, but will DM me and be like, I sent you a text message and you didn't respond because I'm in Africa and I'm on a different number. I'm sorry. So that's that. I think that's enough for this week. Did we do a proper amount of shenanigans? I think so. That's enough. Y'all know I'm still traveling. Maybe. Please keep me your thoughts in mind. If there are things that I'm supposed to be discussing that I have not yet discussed, please let me know. I know one of the things people keep asking me about is, um, recapping the end of insecure i was like y'all that finale happened like over two weeks ago let it go let it go i know i said i was gonna recap it but like honestly it was okay Easter and them they didn't got it that ending of got was so bad that i've never gone back to watch game of thrones and i used to go back like while game of thrones was on hiatus and i was waiting for like the next season i would go back and watch from the beginning 
because I love Game of Thrones so much. And I was like, I want to be ready for wherever the story goes next and make sure that like I'm up to date and I remember everything that happened and I can, you know, pull from here and here and here and remember all the characters and their motivations and the things they did. So I'm up to date on the story. After the final season of Game of Thrones aired, I've never once gone back to watch Game of Thrones. I have no desire to. With Insecure, the way that it ended, yes. I could go back and watch from season one and watch all the way through and feel like I had a satisfactory viewing experience. There was a satisfactory story told. It wasn't a bad final season. It just wasn't a knock it out the park final season. It was solid. I felt it was a little slow in comparison to other seasons. I thought Tiffany and um, Kelly, their stories were sort of like short shifted. I've heard like the, the major critics of the ending be like, we just watch all them seasons of this show for all these years. For her to go back to the same dude she broke up with in season one. Really? Yeah. I thought the overall message was like, you know, timing is everything. You got to grow. And the heart wants what the heart wants. Like she moved on from Lawrence because like, you know, it was the right thing to do for her at the time. But over time, she realized like that was her person. They went through some back and forth and some ups and downs. And, you know, that's just who she wanted to be with. And, you know, he wanted to be with her. So they figured it the fuck out. I wasn't mad at the ending. It was just, it was an ending. I did appreciate Molly's growth. And I think that the slowness of, of the last season, a lot of that was getting Molly to growth, which I appreciate. The same thing with Issa. You got to show the growth in some ways. Otherwise, it's just like, wait, she was X and now she's Y. Like you got to show how she got to Y. So, I, I mean, I think everything that happened in the final season was necessary. It just, you know. It just moves slow. Not a bad story. I did appreciate the way it ended, though. Like, the final two scenes are Molly calling Issa from her honeymoon and talking about how her husband's about to, like, break her pussy, which ties back, obviously, to Broken Pussy from, like, the first season um, and how Issa embarrassed the hell out of Molly. So I appreciated that line. And then I also appreciated that, like, the story ended with sort of, like, life goes on. Like, Issa's on the phone and she's in the bathroom And then she continues on her phone conversation and goes back into another room in the house to Lawrence and the kid. And that's that. That's how the show ended. Like it goes on, like life goes on. Um, I think it gives an opening for almost like what's happening with Sex and the City right now. Like 10 years later, there could be a reboot of Insecure. A lot of people hate the Sex and the City reboot. I actually quite enjoy it. I'm glad that show is back. I like the show. I like the characters. Like everyone else, I miss Samantha, but I think it's working. It's not the same show it was, but the show that it is now, I like. But I think that Insecure could do something like that um, in 10 years, too, if they wanted to. They may not. I think it would be interesting to see, like, where all the actors end up and the writers, too. Um, Insecure was a juggernaut. Um, It was a cultural phenomenon. And now it's gone. And Issa and all the actors from the show, actors and actresses, are going to go on to do other things. And I look forward to seeing what those are. So that's my Insecure finale recap. I have not seen, I think there's a special on HBO of like, you know, the last episode or saying goodbye. I haven't seen it. Um, The sites that I'm able to access in Ghana that allow me to watch like basically bootleg versions. I haven't been able to access. They didn't carry that episode. So I'll watch it whenever I get back to the States, which has to be sometime within the next 11 days because my visa expires. And I was hanging out with this guy who's actually a diplomat. And I was like, what really happens if like, I stay in the country beyond my visa? Like, I don't know. Because like, in America, I want to say if it's you stay an extra six months beyond your visa, then you can't come back for three years. But if you stay beyond a year, then you're banned from the country for 10 years. But if you stay up to six months, then nothing happens. And he was like, Can you not try that, please? Like, literally for my job, this is one of the issues I deal with. Get a new visa. He was like, if you're going to stay, get a new visa. And I was like, I have to go back. I have to go back. And he was like, do you? The million dollar question. Could my six months just start now? I mean, it could. It won't. I don't think. I don't know. I told y'all a couple episodes ago, I'm not sure about anything in my life anymore, which has given me a sense of comfort because I don't know anything. I'm not even trying to know anything. I'm just living in search of a 10. 
Is this what people who do crack feel like? Like everyone always talks about like you do crack and you have like the best experience ever in your life. And then you spend like the rest of the time you're doing crack trying to get back to that 10 high. No, it's not like doing crack because I have 10s on a consistent basis. Okay, now I'm starting to talk crazy. I'm going away now. I'm going to go edit this episode. If you have not picked up merch off of the website, especially to celebrate the three-year anniversary with me, if you don't have your podcast merch, please purchase it from DemetriaLLucas.com. Okay. We'll talk soon. I don't know if I'll be back soon, but we'll talk soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.